This is okay. So this is uh, the unsupervised learning chapter, chapter twelve, Cody Court two. And this uh, first part of the chapter, we do principal component analysis. So the learning objectives of this uh, um, first part is to understand uh, principal component analysis, make a visualization using principal component analysis, and then have uh, an introduction about matrix decomposition to make principal components. Okay, so unsupervised learning techniques are used to reduce the dimension of the data set. And suppose we have a data set composed of N observation and P features. So we have a matrix N times P. What we want is to select the best composition among our P features to achieve the highest value of data representation in a lower dimension environment. So a little recap to, uh, about the differences between supervised and unsupervised learnings is that fir first thing is supervised means guided, okay? So it's intended as a guided by a response variable. our dimension reduction analysis is supported by an outcome when we do supervise and this outcome variable uh, will serve as a control variable for the result of the analysis so we have something on the contrary the unsupervised analysis hasn't got a response variable to use as a checker but the dimension reduction, reduction is carried on only on the features based on the variance level. So this is the reason for which the unsupervised learning technique is a bit more challenging. So we do not have something such as control variable to rely on, on to verify the result. Basically, this the the main scope of the unsupervised principal component analysis is data, data visualization to obtain a visualization of all the components of the data set in a lower dimension space um, and have an idea of the, the relation. What uh, else we can say about this is that uh, when we do unsupervised analysis, we deal with a matrix of numbers. And we are just comparing these vectors. And this is because the scope of the unsupervised analysis is data visualization. Because if we would like to represent more than two vectors, in a, in a visualization, we, we need more dimension. So we like to have a, a visualization in two dimensions, for example. So we uh, need um, a transformation of the variables in a way that we have just two elements to project in our B-dimensional uh, visualization. Okay, and this in general would be the first two components. Okay, so we transform our uh, matrix of data of a certain number of predictors, so the features, a certain number of features, in uh, a reduced amount, uh, so a lower amount of components. And usually the first two components uh, explain uh, the, the, the highest, the, the most of our data. So we can uh, have a, a visualization which is B dimensional with uh, the first and the second component. Okay, so what are the steps to principal component analysis? Here we have a, some, a bit of math, okay, to understand what's happening. So the step to unsupervised dimensionality reduction principal component analysis are variable normalization. So we scale the variable in a way that they all uh, are the same 
uh, mean, variance, and uh, standard deviation. So they have mean zero, they are centered, and is, is, so they are scaled. Uh, then we search for the highest variance component selection, and then reduce the variable to, uh, and then uh, a linear com combination. We, we find, we search for a linear combination with a reduced number of variables. Okay, here we need to focalize a bit about the indexes. So we use two indexes, E and J, I and J. So I is from one to M and J is from one to P. Okay, M is usually lower than P. And there, there will be uh, more information in the StatQuest uh, principal component analysis. There is a video in the chat. Um, so the, our starting point, as I said, is a matrix N times P. Okay, this is our uh, matrix of data. All the elements inside are composed of X, E, and J, and everything. So it's a matrix that um, it has a certain number of features and a certain number of observations. So of this matrix, we now uh, take a section. So let's say the first, the first row, the first observation, which is X um, sub one, to x sub p. So these are the, the uh, this is the first line of, of this matrix. The linear combination of this uh, uh, x sub j and the betas, uh, which are the coefficient that we are searching for when, when we make uh, a model. And so we do some analysis and everything. Uh, and um, are uh, composing a, a linear combination. So in this case, we don't have a Y because Y would have been the uh, response variable. In this case, we are thinking about just the linear composition of our features. Okay, uh, and so this is the linear combination of the original data. The first step is to normalize. So to normalize, we do this uh, bit here. So we take the element X, we subtract the mean, and then divide it by the standard deviation. So the new vector Z will have a mean zero. The element will have a mean zero. So what we want is to visualize our feature on a reduced dimensional space while extrapolating the highest level of the information from the original data. In order to do this, we reduce P to a, low, a lower value, M, which will be lower than P, okay? To obtain, or th th there's more to say about that, and we, we, we will we'll see later, to obtain a sample which is representative of the level of variance of our data. So our new Z sub M vector, it's a composition made of M features where M goes from one to M, capital M. And this, is, this will be the new vector. So the, the standardized vector. Then what we want is to find a linear combination of, our, of this vector. So we need to find these P elements because we, we mm, okay, the, this P element. So it's a bit of turnaround. So this is what we want. Um, and if we uh, do reverse the, the calculation to obtain our original data, we'll find that they are approx approximated to be equal, not, not the same. So the, the sum of our linear combination would be equal to our uh, um, original elements. 
so these elements, the phi elements here, are named loadings. So to find these elements, so this new vector, there is a, a matrix decomposition. And then so uh, um, a transpose of the, of the first matrix to the second matrix in a way that in, in a, in a b-dimensional uh, condition, we have x equal to, let's say, uh, phi z, okay? If we want to, when the condition is equal, so we have an equivalence, we, we just reverse the elements to, to have z equals to the uh, one divided by the other, okay? So this is simple math. To, to do this uh, within a certain number of features so, and elements, we need to reverse uh, the, the matrices. Okay. So, and, to, and then we will be able to find the loadings, which are the phi elements that, uh, that we can see here. There, there is one condition when M is equal to the minimum between n minus one and p, n are the number of observations and p the number of features. So when m is equal to the minimum between these two, we are able to achieve the equivalence of these elements. So one more condition is that the sum of the square sum of square of the loadings is one. So basically we constrain these loadings so the sum of square would be equal to one. Okay. Um, now, now let, let's say that we have done this matrix decomposition, we have obtained uh, uh, the values that we want. Uh, we want to see how much error we have made doing this thing. So we want to minimize the difference between our original data and what in and our new linear combination. And we do this with the uh, Euclidean distance. So we want to minimize the distance between the original data and the new data, the transformed data. So we have scaled and then reverse it to find those coefficients, the phi, that will uh, summarize our data with a certain level of error, okay? So our first principal component, okay, is obtained focalizing just on variance, okay? Because I thought, I found z, okay? Z as a mean zero, Okay, I scaled the dx, uh, so I standardized the x vectors in a way that they all have mean zero, but then they have variance equal to one. Okay, so what is this variance that we are searching to, for, for, to be at the highest level? Okay, I don't know if it's just a question that, but, uh, is the z that has the variance equals to one, then we multiply this z for a phi coefficients. And so is there that we are searching for the variance. We are searching for the variance of these two elements. So the variance of x, in the original data goes from, uh, is the sum of J that goes from one to P, the number of features, and is done with this formula, no? It is the standard deviation, the squared of the squared. Now, when we have transformed information, so we have our, our Z. We're supposed to have 
a variance for z which is equal to this other part of the element. So now there is phi here multiplying the, the x elements. Okay. And um, what, okay, this is the sum of square, okay. And uh, so we are searching for the maximum value uh, within all the phi vector that maximize this, um, the sum of square of the z, the residual sum of square. Okay. Then, so this is equal to this, exactly the same, but shows that what happened on the first when we just select one element of our matrix. And this is subject to the fact that the, the square uh, of the loadings, the sum of square of the loadings need to be equals to one. So how do we do these things? How do we achieve these things? How do we calculate these things? Okay, the calculation of this objective pass through the agent value decomposition, as I said, so the matrix decomposition which alternative is the singular value decomposition. And this is what we are going to see. So using the function in R, singular value decomposition, we can see how the matrix compose. So having said that, uh, that we have found the, the, the components with the highest variance, uh, the, with the maximum value, uh, value of the variance and everything, how much, uh, of the information in a given data set is lost by projecting the observation onto the first few principal components. And then how much of the variance in the data is not contained in the first few principal components? We answer these questions considering the proportion of variance uh, explained. And there's some condition within R and the, uh, the formula, the function that we use that we can specify the amount of uh, proportion of variance explained. So we can verify what's happened if we specify 50% of variance or 20% more, more than 80%. So maximizing the variance of the first M principal components means minimize the mean square error of the M dimensional approximation and vice versa. Okay, so we, we, can, see, we can see these things in both ways, maximizing the variance or minimizing the mean square error. In conclusion, the principal, principal component analysis is a question of minimizing the approximation error or maximizing the variance. Okay. Now, this is the best part. Okay. So we do this for making a visualization. Okay. And uh, for example, I have uh, uh, a disbanding versus population. So this is a graph that uh, is being mentioned in chapter six of the book and uh, again mentioned in, in this chapter because it clearly shows how principal components uh, appear in uh, when we go back to uh, visualizing our original elements as well as the uh, information provided by the principal components. So we have a dispending versus population. And obviously, it's an a increasing uh, trend. And the, the green line is the first principal component, while the, sec the second, the blue uh, da uh, dashed line is the second principal component. Okay. And um, the, the key 
things is that the second principal component is orthogonal. That means perpendicular to the first principal component. Okay, so once we have the first principal component and we can uh, uh, achieve the second in the visualization by using the information like the, uh, the intercept and the slope with a little modification because there is a different coefficient that multiply the second component more than the first component. So the 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 feature, the sorry, the, um, the line that is orthogonal, so perpendicular to the first principal component is the second principal component. Okay. Here there's some information. Um, which I found uh, interesting, I put in the chat. And um, just to it guide you up, uh, a bit about visualizations of principal components. So the chapter talks about, uh, consider this US arrest uh, data set. Okay, so it's made of four main features which are numeric, murder, assault, urban population, and rape. And then there is a state vector, which is uh, the, the factor. So the, the, um, uh, it's a character vector. We don't use it in principal components because we want a matrix of numbers unless we want to transform this state vector into a numeric one. So we don't consider this state. And we focalize on this matrix. Uh, okay, here I found this function, map data frame, which is very useful because once we uh, deselect the state and then we scale, we use the scale function to uh, scale all the values. Uh, we need to use the data frame because otherwise it doesn't work. But then we, we put again, because scale transform it in, in a, uh, the data as a matrix is. So we need to transform it back as a data frame to use this function. But then it's nice, it's straightforward, easy. So you can see that the mean of uh, the four components is, is zero. Okay, so we have standardized the variables. Now I've tried to do this uh, by hand. So doing the murder minus the mean and then divided by the standard deviation and doing the same things, we obtain the same result. Okay. Um, so now what are the loadings that we are searching for? So this vector of keys uh, that we need, okay, for, for building our new uh, linear combination. So a representation of the loadings, are, um, we can find it, for example, in the first and the second principal components. We use this function, then we see the matrix decomposition and we can see at the end of these things what they effectively are by calculating. But in R, we can use this uh, uh, principal, comp uh, principal component function, or uh, we can use tidy models. And there's other packages that makes the same calculation that there's a function PCA and everything. So here for now, we use PR components as, as the same in the book. We don't need to scale the, the variable before because you can uh, uh, do scale through, which is an option uh, by default. So it does uh, the scaling. And here is the result. So these are, uh, as you can see, the loadings. Okay. Um, the loadings, uh, what are they? They are the rotation. Um, the, uh, of the matrix. 
So the, the, the most important values, let's say the, the average, okay, um, of, the, of our uh, elements, um, of our features with the highest variance. Okay, now we can retrieve this value using the, um, we can select just these values using tidy function and specify that we want the loadings. So they appear in a, in a way that we can use it. So we have uh, uh, the, the column with the, num the, the, the feature names and the value which are the loadings. As well, we can uh, extrapolate the scores. We haven't talked about the scores, okay? Uh, we, we see that the scores obviously are the, the others, okay? So are the, the elements in our linear uh, composition. Uh, in, yeah, so we, we will see later. Uh, so we extrapolate the scores and this is a, a 190 uh, element uh, data set. So the, the, there is much more information uh, because it's basically our data reduced to uh, four principal components. This is a way to see them. Otherwise you can see with tidy models differently and have it them uh, just as the same as here. So these are the loadings, uh, which are not the scores. Okay. Two things. Okay. So now we see the first visualization with the loadings. And we can see that uh, the loadings of the four principal components of our uh, and uh, features shows that um, the, the main trend of the data is well explained by the first principal component. Then you see that the second component is slightly different. And then uh, because they, they are decreasing in variance, basically. So the, the first component is the one that contains the highest values of, of variance. Then we look at the scores to have a, a complete features, picture uh, and we use tidy models. So we make a simple recipe uh, with all the elements without state because we, haven't, we are not considering the state vector we normalize all numeric, then we do PCA, principal component, we prep and bake with new data null, and then arrange for uh, increasing, uh, sorry, decreasing uh, the first principal component. So in this case, we can see uh, that um, the, the visualization, so the, the uh, the scores are uh, in the same uh, uh, visual, um, visually in a, in, a, in a data set as the same as the loadings here. Okay, so we can do this with study models. Then what happened is that um, uh, As I said, the loadings are the rotation, okay? So we can even select the, the loadings this way with a, a dollar sign and rotation, and then making it as a data frame and the row names to colon, we can uh, do a nice visualization of the first two principal components. Uh, DG on points, which I made a shape very little because otherwise makes confusion. 
and then labeling this uh, the state uh, because uh, the transformation that we have done before is to make the state as a uh, row names so they are not used when you apply the function because uh, it doesn't search for the row names so they can be whatever you want they can be uh, numbers they can be characters but they they won't be used so the transformation that is made in this case is that uh, the state are the are, are the row names so now i have transformed this and made the row names to colon after having calculated the pca okay so i put it back in the uh, in the data set in the result so in a way that I could use it. So I, if you label the state and then use geom text, uh, these are just, uh, we, we, we see this, these things later. You can obtain the visualization which is in the book. Okay, so the first and the second principal components then labeling um, by state, you obtain these things. So now, uh, this few line, this line in zero. So the, where is it? Geom V line with the X intercept equals to zero and uh, the the e the y intercept equal to zero gives the idea of where zero is so the center of the data okay. so then using this this uh, this element we can project the other vectors in a way that we can see how they differ from each other in a b plot in a simple simple b plot and uh, the value this are made just a, a geom segment it's a segment that goes from zero to the loadings the loadings is one number okay so from zero to the loadings of each of these things where is it okay yeah PC1 and PC2 from the loadings. So you can uh, see this way that they have, uh, some of them have a certain uh, variance, other have a reduced variance. So they, they differ uh, within each other. And we can see that um, this is in. Uh, going up this way while this for example murder uh, shows a different trend than urban population i mean non trend but uh, you know urban population is more like uh what what do you have something to say about that maybe i believe the the book explains a little more you know how this chart could be interpreted and for example you can see that in that first quadrant where the vector of urban population is located which is the upper right quadrant uh, you can see that most of these uh, states in the united states has a higher uh, a percentage of urban population compared with the total percentage. Okay. Uh -huh. For example, California, uh, New York, those states have the biggest cities, right? New York, uh -huh. LA, also uh, uh, somewhere you should expand, okay, New Jersey also, okay, that has different cities, Trenton, Jersey City, and all that. 
So you can see that that quadrant where that vector is located points to the urban population as a high percentage of the total population. Uh -huh. Okay. In other quadrants, for example, if you go to the opposite quadrant, the lower left, uh, you will see that those states, they don't have that much urban uh, population okay. within the percentage. So for example, Wyoming, Montana, South Dakota, uh, they are more uh, rural, uh, uh -huh. you know, they have more rural population. The population is so scattered you know, uh -huh. within the states. So that's the purpose of that, of that uh, vector. Okay. okay. To point yes. out which side of that of those four pieces, which side has the most? Okay. Uh -huh. You know, from the perspective of what you said about the maximum variance. The uh -huh. same thing for, for sexual assault, rape, assault, and murder. Okay. okay? So the, the same as for murder, for for example, so Tennessee, Maryland, Louisiana. Exactly. So, so that, that will point that those states have a higher rate uh -huh. of murder compared to the total, to the uh -huh. total mur murders, uh -huh. you know, of, 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 the, of the set. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here is another bit of information about the uh, automatic the orthogonal. Uh, orthogonal uh, visualization. Did I put it? No. Okay. Uh, and then, um, which is this one here? Okay. So now. Here I have attempt, um, I've used it just assault and murder. Okay, went back to the original data without any transformation. Uh, deselected the state, made the principal component, and then here there's the rotation. Okay, so. I found this uh, on this uh, Stack Overflow question so that you can uh, uh, basically calculate the using the rotation, which are the loadings of the this one here. So about these two components, about murder and assault, these are the, the four elements I'm interested in. So this will be the second element, the uh, one, two element. So the, the first, uh, so the second row, first column, okay? This element here is first row, uh, second row, first column, okay? So, uh, this is uh, second row, first column element, divided by second row, second column element, okay? So this is the slope, and I've multiplied this by five, just a coefficient, okay? And this by uh, half point, okay? And this is the intercept. Um, this is the, the, the mean value because it's the center. And so I've drawn this thing. I don't know. So this is a salt and murder. This is a linear model, a linear smooth method of linear model. So a smooth, start smooth method linear model, which will be the same doing geom smooth 
method linear model, exactly the same. And then draw the second component, which is obtained multiplying it by five. Multiplying the loadings by five. Okay. <laughs> we got something to say. Maybe. No? Okay. Uh, finally, the last bit is this, the matrix decomposition. So if we look at, at the names of our uh, PCA calculation, we have the standard deviation, the rotation, the center, the scale, and so the value. So if we want to have a look at the variance, we can calculate, uh, say, standard deviation squared, and we have the value of the variance. Then what is the proportion of the variance explained by each component? So we can use the variance that we have just calculated and divided by the sum. Okay, so this way we have a proportion. Uh, a proportion. Okay, so the, the, the percentage of variance for, for each component. So we can see that the first component explains 62% of variance, the second component about 25, the third just 9%. So I go decreasing. So let's say that 62% is a good percentage because it's above 50. So we can say that the first two components explain most of the, the variance of our data. So we can use them for, for make a visualization. In fact, uh, with this um, visualization, we see that the proportion of the variance explained decreases with increasing the number of components and the cumulative at the opposite, the cumulative proportion of variance increases with the increasing of the principal component. So now we have this, uh, these values, okay, which are the uh, components. We scaled the data, make principal components, and we have these values, which is the standard deviation for each component, the proportion of variance, and the cumulative proportion. Just to summarize, you can see them all together uh, this way. How, how they are made, how they are calculated. So if we use this function, the singular value decomposition, on x, okay, x is uh, our data, scaled data without states. Uh, we see if you do names, if we do names, we see the three elements, and, and these are the three matrices. Okay, we have a D matrix, U matrix, and V matrix. We can even see. Uh, what are they, and we may be able to recognize some elements. V is equivalent to the loadings. U is equivalent to the standardized scores, so are the scores, and D are the standard deviations. So what do we do? We transpose the scores uh, against the transpose matrix of the uh, I. Okay, we, trans, uh, we transpose the, the multiplication of the standard deviation matrix by the, the transpose matrix of the uh, of the score um, of the scores. Yes, so the standard deviation times the scores, but reverse it. And then we reverse everything. Okay. Uh, and so we, we obtain the result. So these are our principal components. 
calculation. Finito. Some results here, some uh, references. Uh, and this is the Emil uh, uh, tidy models, uh, which uh, I have here. Okay. Uh, what uh, you can find here is some information about like comparison, how to use, uh, how to extrapolate uh, the scores, the loading as, as I've shown. And uh, as well, uh, you can even see the agent values within the tidy function that are the values of the matrix. Um, what else? Uh, you can see. Uh, we can see this against some uh, new data. For example, to see how they change it. And uh, I don't know. It's, uh, I think uh, you, can, you can set a threshold, 70, 70%, for example. It's the variance explained. So you want 70% of the variance. And uh, some visualization. So, That's it. <laughs> Very good, Federica. Okay, uh, th that's a lot of math, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, with the, with the, with the PCA. But I believe that for yeah. people that are seeing this video in the future, uh, there are two reasons why, you know, you should do PCA. Okay, the first reason is dim the dimensionality reduction. Right, you want to, uh, you know reduce your dimensions your features so that the set that you are you know you, you are uh, using explains the most variance uh, uh, you know in contraposition to using the whole the, the whole model which is the 100 percent right so in this case from four features we reduce it, reduce it to two right to two principal yeah. components okay and usually that's what you you have to you know analyze is this to you know, explain most of the variance, mainly 70 to 80% of the model. And the second one, which is kind of hidden, is that if there are issues of multicollinearity mm -hmm. in this data set, for example, uh -huh. uh, the PCA basically uh, eliminates, eliminates those issues, okay? Because the transformation with the orthogonal uh, you know, vectors, the eigenvalues, mm -hmm. they kind of, you know, eliminate or minimize the, the multicollinearity within each of those features. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's another, uh, you know, uh, benefit. Because if you are using regression models that tend to be affected by multicollinearity, uh -huh. for example, linear regression, logistic regression, et cetera, if you do PCA, then you don't have to worry about uh, multicollinearity. Exactly. Okay. If, if, of course, if, do, if, that, if those two PCA components, those two components give you the most variance because you have to, you have to do a test. Maybe mm -hmm. there are three, there are four, okay? Dep depending on your situation, okay? Yeah. Uh, in, a, in a project that, that I, you know, that, that I use some of these techniques, uh, we had 62 uh, features, okay? And we, reduce it, those features to around 20, I remember 2021 uh -huh. uh, features, about a third, okay? Because even though the two second components are always the maximum, they were not reaching the threshold one, that threshold that you are explaining, mm -hmm. you know, the 0 0.7, 0 0.8, which gives you, okay, these are the number of physical components that will give you that, that maximum variance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So right. right. So next next week uh, we we do this clustering mm -hmm. in the second part sure. of the chapter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stop sharing.
Thank you. <laughs> uh, great. Also, I included the the Stackwest uh, video. Ah, yes. Because okay. I, I know that uh, uh, Josh has a you know he has a magic of <laughs> explaining <think> things <laughs> very very simple and very you know mm -hmm. uh, one by one. So it is good also to you know to 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 get to to get that uh, magic, <laughs> you know rub a little bit. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay, we did it. We did it. We're almost there, right? <laughs> We're yeah. almost there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Okay. See you next week. <laughs> next week. Yeah, sure. And we'll be around in Slack. Okay. I, I believe that there's another book club that we're starting in July, uh, Feature Engineering. Exactly. Okay. In July. Yeah, yeah, I think Jim is there and also uh, uh, bo bo yeah. both of us are there too. So cohort yeah. two is still, is still around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> ciao. 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 Thank <laughs> you.